turns the mics on. <laughs> it depends. Depends what part of the country you're from. <laughs> Jeez. It depends whether you're in the city person. Or not. That's how they talk. Is. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Yarmouth Board of Selectmen meeting of April 10th, 2018. If we could please start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance, allegiance to, the to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And justice for all. Thank you. First item on the agenda are public announcements and comments. Is there anybody here, Vita? Uh, we have uh, Joe Tierney to thank for uh, another $100,000 being added to the <laughs> out-of-control uh, school committee budget last night, more than 70000 of that being added to uh, uh, our share. And uh, uh, so our, our share, as I understand it anyway, it will be $2,136,767. That's including, of course, the 2.5% uh, contribution. Uh, and uh, Dennis is minus 138,374. Uh, if you guys think that you can still deal with those people reasonably uh, and change anything in that uh, uh, formula, uh, I, I think uh, you're really uh, uh, dreaming. Because how, how can Dennis do any better anywhere? <coughs> they certainly can't, can't do it any better than that. Uh, and to think that uh, at least there was a chance this time around to get a, a program, a coherent program into place uh, to see if they could uh, uh, get the special ed uh, children, you know, moving in the right direction. And... Uh, no, there were a couple of people from um, Dennis who uh, were always uh, adding, subtracting. They, they just wanted to keep the uh, social workers uh, uh, in place. And, uh, and then uh, th uh, our three uh, other candidates besides Joe uh, were joined by um, uh, Jim Dykeman. And if Joe had voted with them, at least we would have had a, a something for the children, I think. Because that program sounded to me as though, uh, you know, the, but then not only that, but he, uh, he then uh, ends up uh, voting for something to add $100,000. Excuse me? Uh, to, to, to the budget. Uh, this is, and I, I already told you that the uh, building, the Mattakees building, um, committee is totally in the hands of uh, Dennis. He, this is another one that he, Joey, ch uh, chairs. Honestly, I mean, I, I just don't know what to say anymore. Uh, but be that as it may. Um, I, then I want to go to the uh, wastewater management. What, what kind of a presentation was that at the uh, uh, three town meeting? that no, no figures were given whatsoever, and buried in, in a footnote is a statement that if you uh, do as we recommend you do, you will save $100 million. $100 million from what figure? I mean, if a child had a, an assignment to do a research paper and came in with something like that, I would hope that that child would be marked down. This was so unprofessional, and how can you continue uh, dealing with that man again? That so-called consultant, who I'm, I have on so good authority, <laughs> is, 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 um, uh, 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 has become a multimillionaire on his consulting uh, jobs here on the Cape. I, I honestly, I, I just don't see how you can uh, actually, uh, because do you have any idea what, what he's proposing in terms of numbers for, for this town? Because the, the original one a year ago was not even a warmed over figure from, uh, from uh, seven years ago. And uh, uh, 
I mean, in the meantime. Can you wrap it up, please? Yes. I, I tried to uh, uh, get somebody to, to put it on the record, you know, that the, uh, the total figure that had been bandied about seven years ago of $8 billion for the whole Cape had been brought down to a, a below $4 billion, I guess. And we're not getting not even a penny savings, as far as you can uh, tell from last year's figures. And of course, he didn't give any figures at all this year. So anyway. Yes, ma'am. Oh, good evening. My name is Susan Brito, and I live in West Yarmouth. I just have a few comments I want to make this evening. Um, I want to call your attention, as you all know, uh, you probably have a copy of the February 6th letter that Vineyard Wind sent to uh, NEPA. And on page three of that uh, letter, uh, I noticed that they self proclaim that your request for independent studies uh, are outside the scope of NEPA authority, and actually go on to say that your requests are unrelated to project impact. Um, so I went back and reread your January 23rd letter, and actually I don't see anything wrong with asking about um, uh, updating the Army Corps of Engineers study or asking for impact analysis on the base golf situation or even uh, getting an impact analysis on property values. You know, I bring this up not to talk about the substance, but to talk about the attitude. Uh, it, this is not an attitude of cooperation and partnership um, that they have publicly proclaimed that they are in. Uh, and if this is the attitude they're going to adopt when they need something from you, I question uh, what their attitude is going to be once they get, if they ever get, a host agreement with the town of Yarmouth. Um, it is, uh, it is uh, difficult to imagine how that host agreement actually can be enforced. Um, I've read it several times, and I don't see any enforcement mechanism on the part of the selectmen to try to enforce some of the provisions in the host agreement. Um, so that's item number one. Item number two, I just want to quote, this is from a uh, letter to the editor that another West Yarmouth resident, Arthur Warren, uh, just recently sent to the Cape Cod Times. Again, it's about uh, Vineyard Wind. He's, and he gave me permission to quote him. Uh, he said, Vineyard Wind asserts that it's Cape Cod business, which will provide extensive environmental studies, which on February 6th they said they wouldn't. They're going to create jobs, provide massive tax revenue, remediate all concerns, reduce electric rates, provide uh, subsidies for low-income housing, and repair damage to Lewis Bay. So they're acknowledging that there will be damage to Lewis Bay. Uh, Arthur goes on to say this is nothing but political posturing and the type of thing that would be uh, said during a competition in order to win the competition. Um, and then the last thing, and this is actually a good thing, um, I would like to publicly congratulate our neighbor and my colleague, Chris Greeley, Chris was just selected by the State uh, Commission on the Status of Women as one of their 2018 unsung heroines for her uh, endless devotion to time, uh, her endless you know, dedication, time, and talent uh, to volunteer uh, efforts here in the town of Yarmouth, which we have all benefited from. So congratulations, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tom. <coughs> My name is Bob Palmieri, and I'm a member of the Energy Committee, and, but I am speaking for myself this evening. I'd like to speak in support of the Yarmouth becoming a green community, as indicated by the Commonwealth Green Communities Act of 2008. In the eyes of many, the term green in that act refers not just to a color, but a p political ideology often characterized by a Birkenstock-wearing tree-hugger. However, for me, the green of the act refers to the word as it is found in another word, greenback. Therefore, I think Yarmouth should become a green community, in capital letters, in order to receive those greenbacks to make Yarmouth a greener community than it already is. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Tom? Thank you, Madam Chair. Tom Nicanel, Precinct 3, uh, speaking on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce tonight. Um, three announcements and one comment. Thank you. This Saturday, um, our Department of Public Works 
and the chamber will be having our annual cleanup through the town of Yarmouth. Uh, as you know, um, my saying is Earth Day is every day, not just one day, but our extra efforts will go out this Saturday. You can meet here at Town Hall at 9 o'clock. Uh, instructions will be given out, bags will be given out, and uh, off we go to uh, clean up our community, which we all dear, love, and respect. Uh, and my next comment is um, for the wonderful volunteers we have in town. It's about 300 plus. We have a notice that uh, on May 2nd, there'll be a breakfast in appreciation for these wonderful people uh, at um, 8.30, I believe, at the St. Paris Life Center. So if you can make it, please do. It's a great event. We all get to uh, volunteer our time to volunteer and talk to one another, which is great. And then uh, on April 25th, we have Candidates Night. And as you know, our town cannot run without great selectmen that we have. We have two selectmen coming up. We have a school committee member and a housing authority. And then my comment would be on the Drive-In Site Committee, which they've been doing a great job. I'm kind of hoping when they come and report to you folks at the end of the month that the interim task which you asked them to do, uh, they can finalize and put a number on what it would take to give a fluff and puff to the site. Um, there are some people interested in coming to Yarmouth and doing some special events there. And I think it's very important. It's uh, part of our economic development, which if you can bring 3,000 people to town and they're gonna do four events this year, that's a lot of people that will come to town. And uh, you never know what happens after that, so thank you. Thank you, Tom. Sharon? Hi, Sharon Weimer. I had a couple comments, and one involved the schools, and one involved these, well, not just one comment about the schools, but um, also the other would be the stretch code, which was spoken about by the uh, gentleman from the energy. Um, I've been attending school committee meetings, uh, finance committee meetings, a number of meetings, and it's always an education. And one trying to understand budgets um, is not an easy thing to do if you don't attend some of the subcommittees and see what's going on. Um, but this has sort of been going a long time. One thing that sort of upsets me a lot as a community member is sometimes the comments that are made that are inaccurate and a lot of times I'm wondering whether they are said because of lack of information or whether it's just to present someone's position in a, a good position, a good way. Hopefully it's the first, that it's a lack of information. And um, a number of things that have been said about the school budget uh, process is first of all the school budgets were asked by the town administrator and the finance director to participate in the zero base budget process. So they did respond and said that they have done that. So they're one of the departments that is going to be rotating with the zero based budget. Second of all, um, that's often forgotten. The, the other part about the present day uh, budget is that there have been 20 positions cut from the existing budget, which brought it down from the original high um, budget presentation, um, as well as last night's uh, meeting, which cut uh, one social worker. And in exchange, they, um, in exchange for some of that cost, uh, uh, or the savings, I should say, implemented what the superintendent was trying to do, which was to answer some of the concerns about special needs and what was talked about by Vita. So it became a, a compromise kind of uh, position that they took. But um, I'm not sure the, the decision for the need for doing this um, was fully reported. Right now, in this year's budget, <coughs> they have a freeze on at the schools. They can't go and spend any money without approval. 
um, and so out of their budget lines, they can't do that. Because 11 students with special needs um, have cost the school department this year over $500,000. So when you have a budget that doesn't include properly the development of special needs and out of district placements and in district placements as well is part of the, the problem um, that's needed. I should give you just a quick history. Years ago, um, special needs students were put in institutions. It was, there are a lot of horrible stories about that. They came out of that and the schools became responsible for them. But not all the money <laughs> that is needed to take care of um, students was dispersed to handle that. Um, <coughs> they did that because they knew they'd have a better environment, and in fact they do. They have more empathetic um, teachers who can provide better support and so that's been the history. Um, the reason for the social learning teacher, uh, behavioral teachers is what I'm gonna call them. I can't get that new lingo down. Social uh, emotional. Thank you. Um, but basically behavioral teachers uh, were felt to be needed to try to keep, there are two reasons, to keep the students that were being placed in out of district and so the cost, to, to try to control that cost, that would impact on a, on a yearly basis, would impact the other types of great things the DY is doing. They have a great music program. They have great arts programs. Um, you don't wanna take from that because more and more people will leave from this new world of charter schools and, um, which I have a comment about, but, um, and the funding difficulties that all of that brings. So over the years, there is this struggle, and we as a community need to try to figure out how we're gonna look at that a little bit differently than what we've done. There are structural problems with this funding. And yes, if you don't get the same amount of regional transportation, it affects your budget. To say that it's irrelevant is wrong. And that has been said here many meetings ago, and that kind of comment just is a little bothersome. Um, so 300 to 350,000, whatever the exact figure is, for regional transportation, not having it, losing it, has a direct effect on a person's budget. I think it would matter to you folks. Um, so, and, and I wanna say just from history wise, it used to be that this town would run special town meetings to issue the, to decide upon where the, all the free cash that you develop um, goes. And it used to be the schools would have some kind of participation in that because that money was never part of the discussion. And usually it was, maybe you might get some capital um, out of that. And this year, I see free cash is, I don't know, you got 300, no, is it $3 million that's going to, from free cash out of your budget, and I don't wanna take anything away from you, but I want it to be fair and to be talking about what the issues are. And maybe we need to sit down and talk amongst a group to try to figure out how are we going to keep moving on because this is a difficult problem. And I've, I've been doing some research and obviously uh, the two regional district is an extremely hard. You're having difficulty with your partner. At some point back in 07, 08, you changed the regional agreement. That unfortunately started a problem, I think. So um, I know you're trying very hard to um, fix it. They're in the catbird seat. Um, you know, they, they are in the catbird seat for most those changes. Mistakes are made. Um, somehow we need to figure out how we appeal to their better sense. Um, 
But if we can't, then you have to make decisions based on that. So I, ha I am sorry, I'm sort of all over the place, <laughs> but there's history. By the way, when, you, when we regionalized in the 70s, I think it was the late 70s, the law required, required the regional school district to take the more generous distribution of health benefits. So this town was 50-50. Dennis was 60-40. You could be mad at Dennis now instead of the school system because it wasn't their fault. And furthermore, as far as I know, dental, dental has always been offered in the schools. And I called the town of Dennis today to see if they're, they do. And yes, Dennis does dental. So maybe that came along with it as well. So please don't blame the schools for what was required by the state of Massachusetts when you regionalize. And you folks agreed to regionalize back in the 70s based on the incentive of regional transportation being 100% less any school child uh, lives within the one and a half mile than they were supposed to walk. So I'm sorry I'm all over the place, but um, there are lots of issues. And um, I just hope that we're fair in our discussions about what's going on. Someone got up here and talked about, your, you know, when the schools were here, your, your health has gone up 6%. Shame on you. So is the towns. I know, and that's what should have been said. <laughs> that's what should have been said in my mind. <clears throat> Second of all, I guess the stretch code. And so I was surprised to hear the vote from your committee on this, because I can't imagine why, in fact, I know from attending some of the building committee meetings that is the new school, the new school that's going to be built, whether it's for grades, for whether it's just Mattakees and you go it alone or whether it's shared, um, wants to be, or should be, <laughs> energy efficient. Now I know from talking to Carol and Ken, that's what they want, because they need that in order to protect their budgets. So um, I'm hoping you might change your mind when you get to the town floor, um, or uh, maybe investigate whether the district itself can vote the district code for the new school. Um, I know it really doesn't affect them in terms of their attitude because they want it to be efficient, um, but you know it does, I guess, offer some grant money too. So I'm not sure that you want to pass that up. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Chris. Good evening, uh, Christine Greeley from West Germany. Congratulations, Charm by the way. Thank you. Actually, I was shocked and surprised, but I also have to say, I think that they sort of accept it on behalf of so many people in this community and in the state who work so hard on a daily basis volunteering and wanting to do better for their community and for the citizens who live there. And I think that's sort of the guiding principle behind it all. So it's sort of, I accept it on their behalf too. Um, you, you can't pass that off. I, you know, great <laughs> leadership is really appreciated and, and is needed from the community, and, well, and uh, you're a star, a star example of that. Well, thank you very much. I, as I said, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> but anyway, um, I uh, am here actually um, because of the citizens, um, and I think that um, what we represent and what we have are a lot of people who for many, many decades have lived here, loved this community, and in particular when I talk about Lewis Bay, you know, 36-year history of being down on that water and knowing and loving it, um, and um, very, very concerned about how things are progressing about the whole issue of vineyard wind. And I think that um, it's very disheartening, particularly uh, I know that I have attended every single open house, every single event they've had, including at the senior center and that, and to sort of find retired legislators as hired lobbyists. So we're looking at a multi-millionaire, multi-million dollar corporation, foreign, foreign entity, who basically have said it's cheaper to come in through Lewis Bay for them 
and who um, sort of live with the consequences of throwing some very short money that some people would say, oh, it's great to get this money into the town, and I'm saying it's not. We're looking at a 30-year process with a corporation that could go bankrupt, could leave you holding things, who are, have been very unwilling to do even, as I think as Susan described in their letter of the 6th, to even acknowledge the concerns the town has about that bay. We know that it's going to be a long, long time of cooperation and work that you're going to have to do with the town of Barnstable, and I will tell you that our neighborhood associations will stand aligned with you as you do that work, but we're very, very much opposed to Vineyard Wind, and we have not changed our opinions in any way, shape, or form on that. Um, I also need to point out to you um, that there are a series of, of uh, hearings and comment periods I want to just sort of get out into the public, and that is that the uh, U.S. Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, also known as BOEM, um, is, has a comment period going on currently that will end April 30th, but in addition, on Wednesday, April 18th, from 5 to 9 p.m. at the Doubletree Hotel over on uh, Route uh, 28 INO Road, we'll be doing um, work there. They do both the present, they have also open house sort of thing going on 6 to 9, but the presentation and question and answer will start at 6.30, and that's Wednesday, April 18th. If I remove my eyeglasses, I read better. And then, um, secondly, the and they will be dealing very specifically with the offshore kinds of things that are going on, including the placement of the wind farm. And it is our position out of the neighborhood associations, and we believe it should be the position of this town, no landing in Lewis Bay. Um, certainly, they can consider the landing in Covels uh, Beach, but probably much, much better is Brayton Point. And I think there's a lot of research and indication that that's where they all, any of the wind farms locating out there should be. The second part of it is that the energy, the Massachusetts Energy Facility Siting Board, the EFSB, will be reviewing the entirety of the on-land portion of the transmission line and portions of the offshore portion of the transmission line, but not the siting of the offshore uh, wind farm. And they have opened a comment period that will end May 8th. And then on top of it all, they will be holding a public comment hearing on Tuesday, April 24th at 7 p.m. at Barnstable High School. And so that um, are the two things, the two events, April 18th at the Doubletree from 6 to 9 with the federal government and um, basically on the offshore pieces of it, including the landing. And then on the, uh, the state will be holding it on Tuesday, the 24th at 7 p.m. at Barnstable High School, basically on the onshore things. And we continue to have some real concerns about some of the implications for the landing coming up Higgins Crowell. And when you take a look at the size of the casements and the things that they have to sink in the roadways, I think our future sewering projects on our own utility uses, and that may be seriously impacted by their having gotten priority in on our roads. But I urge you, um, the public, uh, on, these t on the comment periods and on the hearings. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take one, one oh, more. And I, and I will say it has nothing to do with wind, with green energy, or anything else. Go do it, but just don't land in Lewis Bay. <laughs> It's, it's amazing how important energy becomes, uh, and I agree, every day should be Earth Day. Um, I'm just here because Energy Committee listened um, variously in our different homes to the meeting of two weeks ago, and we didn't feel that the Board of Selectmen got all its questions about the stretch code adequately answered, in particular the one about affordable housing. Um, so what we've done is we've dug in <coughs> and um, we've done some research. And we've put together not only the building code um, energy efficiency requirements, which as far as we can tell apply to all 40 B housing, but we've also done um, FAQs, you know, the 10 most frequently asked and answered uh, uh, questions, well, asked anyway, that we thought we thought needed answered. And we, and we hope you'll find this helpful, and we hope that the people of Yarmouth will find it helpful. Um, Yarmouthians who are here tonight, um, this is the loud yellow handout over there, if you're interested. That's the FAQs. Um, we're going to be doing further research on this because we really want to advocate for the very best energy policy for Yarmouth. 
but we are also aware of the R word, the resource word. And if you wanna see how seriously we take that, take a look at the date on your reused <laughs> folder, and I think you'll see we're very serious about that. Um, there were questions that Eric had quite logically about um, um, the, uh, the positive pressure within houses and the negative pressure of large wind events like a hurricane outside. We are only scratching the surface of that um, and we're finding that the best case studies seem to be in Florida, which is coastal and hurricane country, because there don't seem to be any cases uh, here in coastal Massachusetts. So we have for him tonight a few popular press things on Habitat for Humanities homes and how they did in Hurricane Andrew. But we promise that we'll be working more on that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Okay, that will be the end of public comment. I appreciate everybody's comments. I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Mr. Stone, the appointments chair. <clears throat> Thank you. Peter, you wanna come up? You can. Oh, the receipts, yeah. Thank you. Peter, you want to identify yourself, please? Peter Lucido, owner, Sea Dog Brew Pub. Okay, Peter, I'm going to read the ad and then you can proceed. The Yarmouth Board of Selectmen, acting as the lo local licensing authority, has received an application from Peter Lucido, manager of Sea Dog Brew Pub, for special wine and malt and entertainment licenses for a fundraising event to benefit Rett Syndrome. The fundraiser will be held under a tent in the parking lot of 23 Whites Pass, South Yarmouth, Saturday, May 5th, 2018, between the hours of 5 and 9 p.m. Entertainment will include amplified music and a TV under the tent until 8.30 p.m. Hearing will be held on Tuesday, <coughs> April 10th in the hearing room at Town Hall, 1146, Route 28, South Yarmouth, the Selectman's meeting begins at 6 p.m. Written comments will be accepted in the, in the Selectman's office until 4.30 on Friday, April 6, 2018. Verbal comments will be accepted at the hearing. Um, thank you very much. Uh, this event is actually very special for a lot of us just because of with the Rett disease, um, which has actually is a neur neurological disease disorder uh, for, for females after th three weeks of birth. Um, Jill Andres is a Yarmouth resident. She goes to DY. She has rats. And, um, you know, he's a family friend. And, you know, it's, it's a, this is a great benefit for them. Uh, but also, they're $25,000 away from raising a million. And so we got together with them and with um, the special days coming up with the Kentucky Derby and with the Cinco de Mayo being the same day, we decided to throw a little fundraising fundraiser event under the tent, similar to the September Fest event we had, um, which was very successful and it was a very uh, it was ran smooth as could be. And it was family friendly. It was a great event. Um, the music will be Mark Hennessy for it will be only acoustic, so we won't have a band or anything like that. And um, we actually will be, we'll probably be ending the event earlier than at 8.30. I just gave a little extra just to, for cleanup. Um, but that's about it. Okay. Um, before I go to the board, is there anyone um, in the audience that would like to be heard on this? Tom. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Tom Nicanel, President of the Yamaha uh, Chamber of Commerce. And um, Mr. Lucido has done a wonderful job in the past on these events, and we'd like to encourage uh, this one also, and uh, we wish you the best of luck, sir. Thank you. Um, anybody in the board have any uh, questions or comments? The only question I have is, so it will be similar in terms of um, maintaining the perimeter and making sure that the alcohol is not served outside or taken outside of the area? Yes. We learned the first time we're actually going to have one entrance that's actually going to be access into the pub and into the event. Um, so we'll have security barriers all around the tent, and so there'll be only one entrance, period. And your um, written submission, you, you do have a little um, paragraph on crowd management saying there'll be, you're estimating 200 attendees 
Um, there'll be people at the entrance checking IDs to ensure that people drinking are of proper age. Wristbands will be provided for those who are 21 and over. And employees will be walking the perimeter of the property, making sure people do not leave the area with alcohol. Correct. They're correct. Correct. All right. I'm, I'm very familiar with this family. Actually, they lived right next door to me for many years. They are wonderful, wonderful people. Um, the little girl, she, I think she's about 15 years old now, and goes to DY. Um, this, is, this is a very debilitating um, illness, and uh, a lot of research is being done in the area, and they're making a lot of progress at the genetic level, and um, I can't think really of a better cause for people to support than this. So if anybody um, wants to give any monies or donations, how do they do that? They can actually, actually we're accepting the donations on site that day. Um, we decided not go through any social media with, <laughs> there's a lot of security stuff going on right now. So we decided to go right through at the door. Uh, they'll be collecting donations. Okay, good. I'll make a motion, close the public hearing. We have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Is there any further discussion? I, I just had a basic question. Um, the, the restaurant itself is fairly large. You have a seating capacity of 130. What, why are you choosing to have it outside? Just in case. So we're going to just just in case we have the overflow. For just so the di so we're not going to close the restaurant for just the charity event. Okay. So we're expecting about 200, 250. So this way we have enough space for everybody. Okay. And also, Peter has to get the license in his name because you can only um, operate on the licensed premises and the business itself is confined to the inside area. So if there was an overflow, they would have a problem without this, without this extra license. Okay. All right, okay. do I have a motion? I made the motion, it was seconded. You made the motion to close the public hearing. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Make okay. a motion to uh, approve the application as presented. We have a second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Thank you. That concludes the hearings on licensing, Madam Chairman. Okay. The next item on the agenda is to vote and sign the annual town election warrant. I think that is signed. So there's a copy in front of sure. you of what the ballot would look like, and then there's a signature page in the blue folder too. So perhaps we should go to the other article, the other item on the agenda first. Okay. Um, Dan's prepared a warrant article with the um, full amount of the override here. Uh, the, let, the vote was taken at the school committee last night, and um, letter sent to Dan today leaving the Delta um, and the need for funding still at $546,767. So I guess uh, before we sign it, we have to make sure that um, it's, I don't think it's in there. It's right there. No, that's not it. This is it right here. <laughs> it's something about. Uh, this is it right here. This, oh. is, this is the warrant. I don't know if you all have it at your place. Just the ballot, not the warrant. Just the ballot. But, well, it's called an election warrant, sorry. Say it your way, I'll say it the right way. It's an election warrant. <laughs> it's a ballot. <laughs> so I guess the question, first of all, uh, based on our previous discussions, this is the way that the board wanted to go. But before we actually vote to sign it, uh, we should have that discussion first to make sure. So if we wanted to do something different than what's on there, we would have to at least state whatever the justification is, like if it's a formula-based situation, if we didn't, weren't comfortable with that number. But this was the, how the number laid out based on past practice related to the student shift. Well, uh, the 546, is that the amount of the override? Yes. Right. That would be the amount of the override. And the amount that would be included in our budget is... How much? It would be if, and I don't have my. We don't have. Sheet. We didn't get a copy of the letter, but last night the vote. I want to say it was. Um, I keep forgetting because they moved it around a couple times, and then they added debt service. So. Um, 
Did you have the? 33. I think that 30. has a figure. I'm sorry, what number are you looking for specifically? The total assessment. <clears throat> I have that in my computer. So let me look that up. So basically, we've this number here. While he's looking at that norm, is uh, last year's number plus the two and a half percent we initially allocated plus the eight hundred thousand that we additionally uh, gave. So it was about <coughs> one point three. Okay. Uh, all right. And I do have a question about the eight hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. um, that was the number that was indicated. Was the difference uh, due to the enrollment shift. change? Mm -hmm. Can someone just talk about how that number was calculated? Yeah, Ed can. He has a whole. So I have everything now. <laughs> Ed Sentio, finance director. Um, the way we calculated it is we took, <coughs> excuse me, the entire DY budget divided by the number of students. And I know you have a question about the number of students. Uh, and we arrived at $21,004 to educate a DY student. So we and took that. Is, is that including everything, transportation? That's their entire budget. That's their entire budget of $60,471,135. Oh, so, okay, so it's 21,000 times? The 39 students, which is 819, but I think we were using a number of 800,000. <clears> okay. Because there are different ways you can calculate this. Okay. And the Yarmouth assessment uh, is thirty-three million three hundred. I'm oh, sorry, thirty-three million five hundred thirty-four thousand eight hundred seventy-five dollars, and that's two point one million dollars over uh, what we paid in FY eighteen. I guess the only thing I'm troubled with at this stage uh, is, well, there are many things I'm troubled with <laughs> about this, but um, ever since I was on the Finance Committee, we've talked about the fact that um, the enrollment numbers that are used in the calculations are based upon the October 1st enrollment in the schools. Mm -hmm. That does not include all the students that were financially responsible and that, for, and that are included in this budget. The $61 million includes approximately 300 and some odd more students. Um, I'm sorry, if the, that, that number may, may be incorrect. Uh, no, it's about 300 more students under the Chapter 70 calculation. <clears throat> the effect of that difference is um, significant for Yarmouth. Um, what it essentially boils down to is that we're paying for any, anywhere between 15 and 20 dentist students to go to either charter schools or out of district. We're paying for those students. That's the result of uh, the difference in those calculations. And, and <clears throat> I think it's only fair that we not be responsible financially for dentist students. And I think that we ought to take the 800,000 down by the number of uh, students, the differential that results from, from the Chapter 70 funding versus our enrollment. I think it's bizarre that Dennis argues and continues to argue that we should continue that inequity of paying for their students. And I think that, um, you know, I'm all for being thrifty. I'm very, very cost conscious. But being cheap is ridiculous. Being cheap and not being willing to pay for your responsibilities is ridiculous. And I don't agree with uh, continuing to, to pay for dentist students that are going out either to charter schools 
or to uh, other uh, public districts. And, well, and that's part of this 800,000. Yeah, but the problem is if we take the number down, that just makes simply the assessment to us is not going to change. So that just makes the override that much more. That's all that does. It's not gonna force anybody to pay anything more. While your argument could be accurate, they would have to realign the assessments based on that, on some type of agreement, which they've never, they haven't uh, right. done. Right, uh, maybe they would have to agree to a different allocation of E and D that uh, uh, gives Yarmouth 150 to 200,000 of additional E and D with no contribution or no uh, give back to Dennis for that in order to make up for this differential. But <clears throat> philosophically, I don't see how we can ask Yarmouth voters <coughs> to pay for Dennis students going out of district. But that's the way they've been interpreting the agreement, whether right or wrong, for all, for all these years. So well, it's... I think it has to come to an end. Kind of late uh, in the game, though. I, I, and I guess what I'm recommending is that we change the override by, by that number to reflect that fact. If Dennis wants to come up with $150,000 uh, uh, for that uh, differential, fine. I'm using the number 150. I, I don't know. It's somewhere between 150 and 250, I think. I don't have the precise number right at hand. But, you know, for them to continue to insist that we pay for their students is ridiculous. Okay. Anybody else have anything to add to that? Um. That, what Norm just talked about is something that came up in the subcommittee discussions with Dennis. And um, as I recall, Norm, um, one of the suggestions that you made was to, one of the proposed amendments to the agreement was to do the allocations before choice and charter numbers were factored out. Correct. In other words, have the choice and charter number into the gross number before That's you correct. divide the allocations. And I, and I think Norm's correct, uh, and, I, and I think his logic is, is sound that. Um, and Carol agrees, by the way. Carol agrees with, with those calculations. Well, it's, uh, yeah, and, and it's the Dennis people that, um, I mean, they, they, we really didn't get to um, a definitive position of theirs, but on that issue, but based upon their response to other proposals, um, I'm not optimistic that they will embrace in, 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 embrace in, that. And, and hearing Eric's words <laughs> echoing in my ears as I speak about not not raising the expectation level too high. In their recent public meeting, uh, just uh, it was it early. It was last Monday. Uh, last, last week, Monday. Um, they said that they were not going to agree to change the enrollment numbers. So their philosophy is that Yarmouth should continue to pay for Dennis students going out to charter and tuition. And that's a serious problem. It really is because um, from the very beginning of the negotiations with Dennis, um, because the agreement is an archaic agreement and because it is an inequitable agreement uh, and really, like you said, as a matter of fairness has to be changed um, every dollar that, that it's changed by is a 100% is a impact to the town of Dennis because they have such a sweet deal as it is. And therefore, uh, I know, know Plath was at least quoted in the newspaper recently, Jim Plath, from the Finance Committee. He says, Yarmouth has nothing to give. <laughs> and, and I guess in a literal sense, he's probably correct. Um, but that goes to your point about being thrifty and cheap, I guess. Well, um, I, I mean, I would add to that. Um, <coughs> Jim Plaff uh, doesn't consider the fact that we have 60 acres of prime, commer prime property in the middle of Yarmouth devoted to uh, a, a school system, uh, which otherwise would probably generate between five hundred and seven seven hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of taxes to the town of Yarmouth. Never mind the services that we provide to those facilities. Um, 
You know, there, there's, they totally ignore that. And again, it's a matter between thr thrifty and cheap. And our partner is being cheap right now. I um, don't dis well, I don't know. I'd call them cheap, I think, um, I mean, unless, you know. Unless there's a major change, this um, override type situation, or some would call it a crisis, is inevitable. Yes. Dennis, they, they'll pass their school budgets like nothing because they always come in at under two and a half because they're only bearing about a third of the cost. Right. I it's think no the discussion points are valid and need further discussion, but in terms of what the school district has to work with and, you know, it's not going to be fixed this year. It, it, it is a conversation that needs to continue, but they can only do with what they've got and that's what they have to work with right now. It's our responsibility as leaders to, to work to change that. And I, I think that we need to have a discussion about where we go from here based on some of those comments and some of those things. Well, um, the 546 is a calculated number, Tracy. That's why I asked, and mm -hmm. the, the 800,000 of additional responsibility is a calculated number. But it's based in my, on... In my uh, thinking is that it should not be 39 students, it should be 20 students because we're paying for Dennis's students to go out of district. So we should net out those number of students from that calculation. So it should be 20 students times $21,000, about $400,000 as opposed to 800,000. But are we being assessed based on the regional agreement that we have now? Are those students in that shift that we're being assessed for? They are. Well, I mean, that's, that's my point. In part of it, uh, not in all of it. Uh, the state, uh, the Chapter 70 numbers, uh, the Chapter 70 uh, calculations are based upon the total student count. So it's a mixed bag. Yeah. And it needs to be addressed, there's no doubt, but I, I don't think that the school even has the ability to shift that back to, to Dennis at this point. Well, so the, school, the school committee, in, uh, particularly in view of the fact that Carol agrees with our position, the school committee could put forth an amendment. Well, I think that that's what we need to do. I think based on I think based on watching the meeting last week and what we saw, I think we need to meet with our uh, school committee members as a group and come up with where we go from here. And perhaps we need to put forward um, the agreement thus far to the voters directly and speak to the voters. And if we cannot um, get the voters of Dennis to agree with us, then we need to go in a different direction. Um, but to me, that's the way I see it playing out. But as far as next fiscal year, they can only work with the agreement that's in place right now. Does anybody else have anything they want to add? <coughs> I just, you know, I, I agree with everything you said, Norm, but you know, outside or, or absent uh, an amendment to the regional agreement, um, the school's not going to do anything. And, you know, Dennis is very supportive of education as long as it doesn't cost them anything. To think that they're going to just going to kick in extra money because they think that it's the right thing to do, there's no way that's ever going to happen. So while I understand your argument, you know, taking the value of those 10 students out of the 800 that we allocated to fund the student shift, I think that you'd have a hard time convincing voters, um, not only that you were right, but that Dennis should be on the hook for more and we should be on the hook for less. And what you do is that you then transfer that amount to the override, which, you know, whether or not you like overrides, you know, we're probably all going to hold our nose and vote for this thing because if it doesn't pass, then it comes back to us and we look at cutting things from the town budget. But transferring that money over decreases the likelihood that it's going to pass. And, you know, I think we've seen a shift. Um, you know, we have certainly done our job over the last few years in being responsible for our, for Yarmouth students. We didn't used to do that. 
Um, you know, when I first came on the board, the two and a half, any budget increase was subject to allocation or appropriation, which means if we didn't have the money, we weren't going to give it to them. But we've since committed, you know, two and a half percent over the prior year's assessment automatically. And, you know, we have since also committed to pay for our students. And then within the last two or three years, we have said that, you know, above our two and a half percent and above the value of our, of the student shift, you know, that amount is going to go to an override. And, you know, it has been, I think in the, I don't think I've seen a school override fail. Um, there have been years where we tried very hard to whittle it down and eliminate it. And, you know, we were very successful in doing that. Um, you know, there were a lot of meetings, extra meetings with, with Bill, um, trying to rework the budget at the last minute um, to avoid any override altogether. But, you know, I, I think we have seen the people of this town be supportive of the schools lately. Um, and, you know, I would at least like to fulfill our obligation to pay for the students, whether or not 10 of them are dentists, is, you know, you can argue that all night. It's not going to change anything because Dennis isn't going to voluntarily kick in, you know, 250 grand. My, my point on this is that, um, <clears throat> and I'm not going to argue against, I, I want to fund the schools properly. Um, but I want our voters, our taxpayers, to know how stinking this is. Uh, yeah, I think that they do, Norm. And, um, uh, you know, to the point that, that Dennis won't even pay for all of its kids, I just think it's ridiculous. And the numbers are what the numbers are at this point. Um, but, um, you know, the school administration could do something about this. It's mm -hmm. within their capability to request an amendment to the agreement mm -hmm. and put it before both towns. They have that, that's a, their right within the regional agreement. They could also, another option for them, as I said before, is to ask Dennis to um, con contribute its portion of E&D funds to cover the tuition being paid for Dennis students that otherwise Yarmouth is going to pay. Uh, but none of those options is, mm -hmm. instead, is being forced all on Yarmouth taxpayers. Uh, I, I don't ag like that a damn bit. I agree with you, but to, to sit here as we're getting ready to vote on the ballot and say woulda, coulda, shoulda, doesn't help us this year. Yeah. You know, if we want to fight for it for next year, I mean, I think we can come up with an amendment to the regional agreement that would do everything you say mm -hmm. and put it to the school committee for a vote and I, I forget how the process yeah, works. Yeah, then they, yeah, they that's, submit that's it to the true. towns, they, and they I, they I think it. that, you know. But it should I, come from them. It could yeah. be at our direction, but it has to mm -hmm. come from them. Right. But to do it, but to, but to say it should have happened and it should, it, you know, take effect with this year's budget, I don't think that's fair. I think we need to start that process because <coughs> uh, based on what I watched in their meeting last Monday, they really don't have any appetite. Um, for change and uh, there was absolutely nothing put forward in, in any way of a change and even specifically said there'd be no change in capital. You're talking about Dennis. Yes. Right. So I think that we need to um, come up with something or ask the school committee to come up with something at this point and, and uh, put it before the voters and if the people of Dennis choose not to um, accept it then, then we know what we need to know. I mean, I don't, I don't see any other way going going forward and you know I I, you know, I don't want to go off on a tangent but we're in a very unique position right now of being able to you know put on our, our big boy shoes and do something with the opportunity we have to build a new building mm -hmm. um, whether or not we want Dennis to be involved in that I, I think we hold a pretty powerful uh, hand um, in that game right now I'm a firm believer that this new building, while it will sting in the beginning, in the beginning, Yarmouth, we, we may want to do it our own, fill it full of Yarmouth students, and just say, you know what, Dennis, we'll share the high school, but we're done with you. Right. 
Well, after watching that meeting, it was a little bit frustrating. And, and I know the, the, the time and effort that both Mike and Norm put into it because Eric and I have been in the same situation and I basically saw the same thing. And at the end of their discussion, not only did Mr. Plath talk about we didn't offer them anything, um, which was completely frustrating because initially I want to reply and say, well, you know, well, why did you stay so long? Well, obviously, you know why you stayed so long because we have a lot to offer. We have offer better educational benefits. We offer financial stability. I mean, there's, all, there's a whole litany of reasons why being in a regional agreement and being a partner is a good thing. And, you know, so your initial thought is, oh, we, know, we, need, we need to respond to that. I think that it should have been responded to. I think it should be responded to. But they sat and they don't want to be in um, conflict or not agreement with their finance committee. So basically, I don't foresee them putting something together. I mean, it's going to be the finance committee and probably the board of selectmen against anything that we put before the voters in Dennis. Um, you know, so you got two sides. You got one that says, you know, that's unfair that he would even say that. And then the other half says, you know, we're in a marriage with somebody who doesn't love us, and we're keeping it together for the family. <laughs> for the and kids. we're going to buy another for the house. For the children. Right. Right. And we're going to buy another house with the people who don't want to be our partner. <clears throat> Time for a divorce. I mean. Well, yeah. I, I, I'll make another analogy. I, I like that analogy. I, I'll make another analogy. Let's say that, that you and I are going to rent an apartment together. Oof. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have hey, enough money, on. Norm. Uh, <laughs> you and I, Tomorrow. You and I are going to rent an apartment. Together. Okay. And uh, so it's got two bedrooms, a nice big kitchen, and a beautiful living area with a big screen TV and all this sort of thing. And we sit down and we say, well, well how are we going to split the rent? And it's got one nice big bedroom with a huge closet. I know you'd want that. <laughs> and Maybe. it's got another little corner bedroom with, uh, you know, it's about half the size of that big red bedroom. And how are we going to split the rent? All right. So, so the, part of the issue is the bedrooms. Uh, how do we split well, the Well, you split the on size, but then you got the but common then, area. But I, then we I got see the where you go. Area. Okay, we got the, the living area and we've got the kitchen. We split that 50-50. And the utilities. That, makes, that kind of makes sense. The same logic applies to the Station Avenue 4 to 7 school. We should absolutely, uh, based on an enrollment, uh, the construction cost should be allocated to the two communities based on the number of students, based on certain portions of that school. But at least half of that school, half of that school is common area. Whether you're talking about supervisory offices, the gym, the cafeteria, the hallways, all those spaces are common spaces. And there ought to be a sharing of those common spaces, just like in an apartment. Now, if you were cheap, <laughs> you'd, you'd, you'd battle me on that. I'm thinking I'll just take the small bedroom <laughs> with the big closet. Can I get both of those? <laughs> and me being a gracious uh, roommate, I might say, that's wonderful trip. No, but your point is taken, and you've worked hard at trying to um, make those points. But my point is, is I, I just don't see it moving forward or going no, anywhere. So I, we, need, I, we need to make we need a decision. To move on this. I, I wanted to say some yes. things that were important based upon the amount of time that yes. Dan, Mike, and myself, and, and the rest of the committee have devoted to the negotiations and what this, this is just a portion of, of uh, the frustration that uh, we've experienced in dealing with Dennis. And, um, you know, it's, we'll, we'll have another discussion at a future uh, agenda, but this, it, it's time that we decide whether we want to live with a, a cheap partner. If I might, you'll have that opportunity on April 23rd. We but have a joint meeting that night with the uh, um, school board and uh, the FinCap. Uh, it's the Monday night. Is that 24th? Yeah, I'm wondering if we, though, should have some type of workshop amongst ourselves before um, we go to the full joint meeting. Um, but 
It's up to the board to decide however you want to do it. If you want to wait and have a discussion, I'm unsure if that's even going to, we can't, don't control that agenda. Um, so. No, but we can, we can certainly put a request in to put topics on there, topical information on mm -hmm. there for sure. But I'm not sure that, that um, I think we, this is a discussion that we, I think as Yarmouth needs to decide how, how we're going to move forward and what we want to do. I'd like to do that with our school committee members. There is a totally up to the board. school building committee meeting tomorrow night, and I think, Norm, your point is very well taken about all these common areas, and I'd also add to that the auditorium, <coughs> which is a very large structure, um, as part of the whole common area experience that, that should, we should probably raise that tomorrow night to get a, a cost analysis. That they, they're far enough along by the square footage now that they could probably give us a, a breakout on that. I've run the square footage numbers. Yeah. I've run the square right. footage numbers. And a 50-50 split on the common areas uh, uh, combined with the other spaces out, uh, split based on enrollment would yield a 40% share for, for Dennis as opposed to the, what they want is a 31% 31%, share. Right. And uh, we've put proposals in front of them, and they've said no. So perhaps it's time for us to bring a proposal to the school committee for them to have a discussion on. Um, but at some point in time, we need to, as a group, look at that, where you're at, specifically on each topic, have, have a discussion, and then bring it to the school committee for their consideration to put before the, the, the town. Not to have any pressure to this, but I mean, we, they are lining up for an October uh, special. presentation, special election or town meeting. However, it is they decide. I sent you oh, an email today on. We'll make sure that that goes that first on the warrant. And we should definitely know, obviously, what the split is on what the pay is going to be. So, yeah. what does the board want to do? We can have our own items on that. Uh, if we have a special town meeting, we could have any number of additional items that we chose to have in there. Mm -hmm. uh, any kind of votes with regard to the our participation in, in the regional district. Does anybody ha does anybody have any direction? Any help that they can offer? Um, well, I need to excuse myself, but I'd like to vote on this yeah. before I go. Okay. Uh, again, you know, like I said, it's. Don't disagree with anything that's been said, but we're not we're not saying that we agree with this. We're just saying this is what the ballot should look like. Right. Right. We don't have to take a position on it right now. Right. We have to we have to print the ballot with a number. I'll and make a motion. We print the ballot as presented to us. Second. Any discussion on that motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Aye. So that solves the both uh, vote and sign the annual election. Make sure everybody signs it in the packet. And then our option. So um, because Eric needs to leave, we have asked, uh, we're going to put off assignments. the assignments. Do you have in your packet, I'm not sure if you do, I have the assignment list from last year. Do you have that? No, we always alternate those, though. Do you want these from we don't, last year? We don't usually stay, stay with the same ones or the same grouping. Again, I... I I do need to excuse myself, but if you want to do them, I mean, I don't. We can wait. It doesn't matter. We, have, we, can no, we can wait. We, we did we it the last week. We, we have last time. No. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, it's just a matter of. I just right. wanted to get it on there to give it some time to think about it. Them, so. yeah, we'll yeah, we have time. That won't take us long to go through no. um, at a future meeting. So. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. So, upcoming agenda review. Well, so if you wanted to uh, have like a workshop meeting. I, I uh, feel like we should, but I, I'm waiting to hear from the board what they want. Um, I think it's important for us to identify the range of options that we have and um, have a thorough discussion of the implications of each one of those options it may lead us then to ask for more information mm -hmm. but until we flesh out the options I think that we're all kind of all over the place and, and you know and, and I think that that's um, uh, we've got to deal with that uh, so for me even if we had a, a, a workshop for part of a meeting I mean, can we do that can we have well we could except for if you wanted to get uh, prepped in time to present something on the 23rd 
Well, it might give us some bones to, for discussion, at least yeah, to let them know what we're thinking. Next week, right? Yeah, we can have a workshop within our regular meeting. We can have. Well, we, yeah, we don't have a regular meeting between now and the 23rd, though. What's today? I don't even know what day it is. Today's the 10th, tenth, right? So yeah. the 17th, we don't meet. 17th is uh, uh, no meet. It's a holiday. Is, is it's tax day. It is also. That is no day. holiday. Um, the 23rd is that. Yeah, the 23rd is uh, Monday. Yeah. Is is the 17th the actual holiday or is it the 16th? Oh, the, uh, that's a good. I believe it's the 16th. I mean, it's the yeah. it's the school vacation week. Yeah. 16th is the Monday. School vacation week is uh, that week, so that's typically a. I mean, we we traditionally uh, avoided meetings on those holiday weeks. Yeah. I'm, I'm available. I'm available as Dan, well. Dan, are you away? Actually, that no. I'm I'm here that night. Actually, there was uh, another meeting the scheduled on that night. Uh, but if we did it like at uh, six thirty, I think I'm meeting with the golf membership that night. Okay. That was like it's like a four thirty to six thing or something. So we could even do seven. Yeah, you could do seven. I mean, we could have a seven o'clock. Is that acceptable to everybody? 17. Seven p.m. on the seventeenth, and we'll just have a workshop just to. Yeah. And I, I personally would like to have our school committee members present. It's up. Yeah. It's Good, uh, if you could invite that. them. Sure. Yeah. 7 p.m. on the 17th. So 7 p.m. or 6 p.m. Let's do 7. That way Dan has time to finish up his other meeting. I don't think it would be more than an hour. No. So. <laughs> Norm's going to come in with a <laughs> with a file cabinet. No, 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 no. I, you know, I, I, I think. I think most of the, we know. Yeah. We've identified the significant issues that need to be addressed, I think, for the most part. Is that, are you available on the 17th, Mark? Okay. Mike? Yes. All right, so then we'll post a meeting for the 17th at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. And yeah, we'll invite yes. the school committee members, the uh, Yarmouth school committee members, yes, please. I mean, it's a public meeting, the rest of them can come, but. All right. So as far as the upcoming agenda review, that takes care of that. So then we would have on the, it would be the 24th where we'd talk about the, the assignments? Yeah, 24th would be, uh, we'd assign assignments for the okay. town meeting, yeah. Perfect. 24th also, um, it's not on here, but we're gonna put um, the, uh, Pass whole presentation that um, we saw like a preliminary on yesterday um, as part of uh, the presentation on the 24th. Okay. We might want to consider on the 24th, the five o'clock start, just uh, the Bass Hole program should be like 45 minutes. I'm not sure what the driving site how long that might take, but that could go kind of long. That's their full unveiling after all this time. Yeah, we better go with five. Does that work, that work Mark? Yeah, yeah. What day is this? The 24th. You know, a fair, fair number of people here, too. Mm -hmm. That's most yeah. likely. That's not, that's not really, a, about, is it a hearing? I might be about no. 15 minutes no. late, but that's it's fine. A, it's, not a, yeah, it's not a hearing. Okay. It's just no their findings. Okay. I'll likely be moving that tree warden. We're not as far along with that uh, <laughs> as we would have hoped at this time. I think that'll end up being the last meeting in May, and that'll be coupled with the Barnstable Water Intermunicipal Agreement. Oh, We're that's a good time. Barnstable uh, later in um, early May to iron out some of those issues. The public hearing on the licensing rules should be rather brief. There's not really many changes. Um, so do we want to, I don't want to confuse people with the time changing all the time. Do we want to start at 5.30 then? Um, it's up to you. I mean, like, I can schedule things on there so that the public hearings can still go off at a normal time at, like, okay. 6 if you want. Maybe we we'll do, do the, the change. We can do the change earlier. of manager first, maybe, and then Mark won't miss because he's going to be a few minutes late. Right, okay. So you want right, to start so at 5.30? or No, we'll start at 5. We'll just put the change of manager. That's usually... Um, 
just pretty procedural. Um, okay, individual items. You said my piece. <laughs> Mike. You said my piece. <laughs> Mark, you haven't said much tonight. <laughs> I think it's all been said. <laughs> okay. Um, I do not have any individual items for tonight. Okay. Well, we are just moving right along. Consent agenda. There's um, some usual items on the consent agenda. Donations, um, the entertainment license uh, application for the Easter services, uh, beachside services, I believe. And, uh, That's kind of past. That was the last agenda. <laughs> I think that they had on there though the uh, Saturday sunrise meeting uh, services were also as part of that as one application I believe. I thought that was the last. Time. Yeah, Easter was passed. Um, yeah, I thought that was in the last one. Okay, is there a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Town administrator updates. Um, I gave you an email update. We had the conversation uh, with MSBA yesterday about uh, Emmy Smalls, and I know uh, Kurt's in the room. So uh, just to overview that, um, if we had wanted to do something with Emmy Small, we'd have to pull our application for Mattakees, re-originate it, request a pre-K essentially through grade seven solution, which obviously is not preferred way of doing things. That being said, the district did submit a, no, uh, a statement of interest to advance a Station Avenue school addition and renovation. That w Those closed on Friday, April 6th. So that actually is the starting point now. Um, then the question is, would they ever consider two school projects at the same time? The, answer, the short answer is it could happen. You're competing in a highly competitive environment for very scarce dollars. They reject 85% of all applications every year. Um, that being said, if you were to uh, get selected, then they look at the local community's ability to pay, which is another hurdle. Um, so the short answer is, is Smalls now, because of the Station Avenue, SOI is on their radar screen. It's in the system. When it's gonna get funded, I don't know. Um, but it, help, well, it will now go in year after year. Um, Nothing stops you from doing something on your own, though, for sure. Um, they did make that clear. And then as far as administration, there's been some conversation with the Mattakees building site to uh, move the administration building into the new building. So they're going to ask the school department to uh, do an analysis as to what the cost was. Did you look at other options to be able to do that? It's a non-participating cost, means the MSBA isn't paying for it, so it completely gets borne by the... By the um, two towns to, to do something with the administration building. Uh, there was, I did discuss, I mean, could you do a private lease with a uh, class A or class B office space? Certainly you could do that to cut down costs and that'd be an analysis you could look at if there was an available office space to consider for school administration. So so you see, you, sometimes you get presented like this is what we gotta do, you know, because it makes sense to school administration, but the reality is there's a lot of different ways you could go down that road, so. I'm a little confused on the uh, moving the administration building. Are they saying that they want requiring that? Requiring their MSBA some is alternatives? Not. Well, they're, what they're asking before they'll. Is it the architects that are that are proposing that? Uh, I, I think the the the, f is the facility itself that they're presently in is uh, in really rough shape. Mm -hmm. So the theory came down to there's no better time to if you're going to build something like this to put it all out to bid as one project but it's got to get approval through the MSBA in that it's their money that's attached to putting out this project, a good chunk of their money. And so they want to make sure before it gets assigned to that that the district looked at other alternatives and what the cost effectiveness is and then also understand that none of it will be reimbursed by the MSBA. It was part of the original statement of interest from the district. It was. It was, yes. It included the uh, administration building. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. And those costs are never right. eligible. That's what they intended from the start. So. Uh, how can that even be? Because we talked about, we started this fe feasibility it's in, it's study. In the, it's in the 
state documents that were filed with the state. But originally we were just doing Mattakees. So they wanted, they were going to move the administration over there? That's what the uh, statement of interest says. Huh. There's no, there's no requirement for the towns who, who are in the district to be notified of any of the statement of interest? Not in this way this is set up because it is the regional autonomous school district. Actually, there was a document that came across my desk the other day and the question was whether or not it was a signature document for advancing the next project to the chief executive officer. Now, if you were a single sole district, right, it would be the authority at the community that was that oh. person. But in this case, it's the superintendent serves that role and signs off as superintendent and the chair of the school board, whole thing. So, so the, the, the wording, I've done a lot of reading on the, huh. uh, all the uh, documentation from MSBA and it's very carefully worded with regard to uh, agreement of district officials. Nothing having to say with uh, uh, town officials. So once, once the first string was opened with regard to the feasibility study, then it was up to the district officials to do what they wanted. And that's why I think the April 23rd meeting is at a critical point because what does the financing or what does the strategy look like that they're going to use to get it presented to the towns to pay the bill? Right. That's what I've asked to be put on the agenda is what's their plan. It should be brought up at that point to discuss how they're going to go about sending the bill. So. Um, on another note, the, I'd like to just uh, bring to your attention, I was invited to go to a surprise ceremony the other day in uh, two of our family's own, uh, Carl and Amy Van Hoen were recognized for 25 years of service to the Barnstable County Rabies Program by the National Fish and Wildlife Service. So they uh, came down and presented some very nice plaques uh, to Carl and Amy for the dedication all these years because uh, what, what's interesting about that was that uh, the uh, rabies is about ready to be, uh, I think, declared to be pushed off to the other side of the canal. So it's uh, very good news and uh, a lot of that good news, it was a huge team effort all these years to, to be on it, but it was nice to be invited to a ceremony where uh, federal government uh, recognized uh, two of our own, so for all their dedication. Congratulations to them. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. Thanks. I'll also let you know we did get notified about um, a couple things on insurance. So um, the final storm remediation uh, repair work that needs to be done on the first floor, we have in hand the final payment for that. We just now have to pay the con have the contractor come back, finish it off, and uh, and then uh, downstairs the finish work is being done by Dick Court and his staff, and they're doing a great job down there. So that's. Uh, putting a finishing envelope on that. And then the second part of that was the IT damage. We were awarded $298,000 for uh, to do something with the IT infrastructure, what that server solution is. So we'll be working with a consultant to, to come up with um, the path forward uh, to um, have uh, virtualization of servers and some redundancy. So that was really good news uh, to get uh, backed up to that degree. Um, the sheriff's department, with coordination with uh, Carl, uh, was able to get the Bray Farm uh, boardwalk back together. Uh, and then secondly, the uh, Bass Hole boardwalk, uh, the RFP request for proposal document should be uh, finalized very shortly to be put out onto the street for bidding and we would hope that we have some respondents. Um, and then we'll go from there with the deadline. Hopefully that will get it done by July 1, so. So how's that gonna be funded? So uh, CEDC uh, provided a grant to the town to do both the Brave Farm, which we saved a ton of money on because of sheriff's contribution, and also I think the number for um, Bass Hole was like 78000 or something like that. So they underwrote it. I think the total was about $123,000 to do the repair work. So we're hoping to do the same kind of thing um, with Bass Hole that uh, there's a certain amount of work that has to be done by <laughs> uh, dock company because of the driving of new piles but we're hoping that once those are set and uh, the stringers are set up we can come back with the sheriff's department staff or some <laughs> other alternative to do the decking in the side rails 
So um, we should hopefully that that'll be underestimated. So all the money's going to come from the CEDC for right. that bass hole, other than what the sheriff's going to help out yeah. with. And or, there's or no appealing to the insurance company. Yeah, that's it. They're the final arbiters on that. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, it's one of those lessons where you you, you know you build in an environmentally sensitive area at your own risk, and they they rate these things and craft them pretty well now that uh, it's harder and harder. I think that the only benefit would have been if we had had a, a national declaration, uh, there might have been some opportunity through FEMA reimbursement, but our county did not qualify for enough damage yeah. to get a national declaration. Yeah. Did, um, did anyone look into whether going forward those structures are insurable or not, and if so, at what cost? So Bray Farm is not insurable. They do not write policies like that anymore. And this one is, uh, um, it is continued under the same very strict limitations. So, What is the cost to just put a platform at the end where it is now? Oh, I don't know. Because it used to be longer. I mean, when yeah, I, it it's, be it's been short, yeah, shortened, shortened already. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the problem with doing anything different than what we're doing is it's the permitting issue in a salt marsh area. So it's okay to go back and replace what you what you lost, but uh, to do anything different than that, that would be problematic, I think. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Any other updates? No, actually, that was some big news that came to us last week on a lot of fronts, so that was good. I still think we need to set up a GoFundMe page. <laughs> Is there a second? second? Any discussion? All those in favor? Any opposed?